Pixel 7 for 90 days, I thought to myself, here's a phone that can deliver flagship level performance and quality while at the same time only costing less than half of your average flagship smartphone. At a glance, this phone doesn't look much different than its predecessor. Aside from a few design changes on the outside and a couple of new components on the inside, the real big change is Android 13 and how well it performs on this phone. Using the Pixel 7 for over three months has made me realize that getting a more expensive phone doesn't always mean getting the better experience. Now take it from someone who's used the Galaxy S22 Ultra. It's a bigger phone, better chipset, better RAM, storage, better use of cameras. But as crazy as this may sound, switching to the Pixel 7 did not feel like a downgrade for some reason. Now while both phones do run on Android 13, the experience I got off of the Pixel 7 was completely different than what I received from the S22 Ultra. So to start off, here's what you get inside the box. Of course, you get the phone itself. Then you get this little white charging cable. And unfortunately, just like every other smartphone maker, you don't get the charging block anymore that's sold separately. But instead, Google has decided to give us this little USB-A to USB-C converter block, which didn't really serve much of a purpose for my day-to-day -day needs, but hey, it's the thought that counts, right? So like I said earlier, there's not really too much to be said as far as design goes, but there is a bit of a change in color and aesthetics. If you look at the camera bump, this year it's not just that straight, solid, flat, reflective black. With the addition of two new colors, the camera bump also plays a part in that color scheming as well. So this year you've got the same obsidian black, and then you've got the snow, which is pretty much white. And then you have the lemon grass, which is a very bright combination of yellow and green. Other than that, still carries the same look and feel as the Pixel 6. The screen, however, does offer a bit of an upgrade as far as brightness. So we're now getting up to a thousand nits of average brightness and 1400 peak, which is a really big plus. Definitely a lot easier to see, especially in direct sunlight. And because the phone itself is actually a little bit smaller, the pixel density is a little bit bigger, giving you a sharper and better improvement on resolution as well. The battery on the Pixel 7 was absolutely no joke. Just like Google promised, the Pixel 7 can give most users who use their phone moderately or not too much a full day of battery life. Now, of course, this is all thanks to Google's Tensor 2 chip and the way Android 13 is just so perfectly optimized, allowing users to get way more screen on time than leading flagship devices with larger batteries. Now, for someone like me who pretty much carries a battery pack and a charger everywhere he goes, while battery life is important to me, at the same time, it's never really been an issue. My phone spends about 75% of the day either connected to a charger or connected to my car. So I've never actually ran into a situation where I had to be worried about whether or not the remaining phone battery life would last me on the way home or last me to my next charging destination. Now, if you're a mobile gamer, one thing to keep in mind is that gaming on the Pixel 7 will indeed kill the battery much faster than usual. Light mode was also no exception. From my experience using this phone, light mode killed the battery about three times faster than using dark mode. But since the phone screen is already bright enough, I really didn't have much of a reason to use light mode anyway. The system performance as a whole was way too impressive for a $600 phone. The animations were super smooth and its ability to complete certain tasks, whether big or small, makes the Pixel 7 a real contender against $1,000 flagships. In my experience, there really hasn't been a lot of smartphones that run Android 13 like the Pixel does. And part of that has to do with the Tensor 2 chip. Now on paper, Google's in-house made chip isn't the fastest on the market. You have the Snapdragon, which is probably the fastest Android chipset out there. Then you have Apple's A Bionic chipsets, which are pretty much at the top of the charts across the board. And finally, you have Samsung's Exynos chipsets, which do just a little bit better than the Tensor 2. And based off of some online benchmarks, the Tensor 2 pretty much ranked at the bottom. And yet the Pixel 7's performance shows us a lot more than what the test tells us. Now, I'm not much of a mobile gamer myself, but I was impressed to see how well it was handling its own against certain AAA titles like PUBG and COD Mobile. Despite a few expected frame drops here and there, the Pixel 7 was still able to keep up. And that's surprising considering that most people would never expect a $600 phone to perform at this level. Which is another reason why good software will always be more important than good hardware. 
Speaking of good software, one of the biggest glow ups for the Pixel would have to go to its cameras and the camera software. Now, picture quality has always been pretty good on the Pixel devices over the years, but the Pixel 7 this year goes way beyond that and delivers stunning image quality in their pictures. The Pixel 7's camera hardware is pretty much the same as last year, but this year it's the software that gets a big upgrade. And based off of these shots, the software is definitely doing its job. It was easy to see just how well the Pixel 7 was doing at processing these photos, giving them a good balance of lighting and shadows, while at the same time maintaining the perfect amount of sharpness and detail. But the most impressive feature on this camera, in my opinion, has to be night mode. Even when it came down to environments with the least amount of light available, the Pixel 7 was still able to bring those shots back to life. But what I found most impressive about the Pixel 7's night mode was the amount of detail it was still able to retain even after the enhancement process, while most other smartphones would cause the detail to take a hit. The video quality was also just as impressive. The stabilization, the resolution, and the HDR enhancements were all improved thanks to the camera's software. Honestly, it's easy to say that this phone might be comparable to the Galaxy S22 Ultra's camera quality. Comparing the two side by side, you can see that the Pixel does give off a little bit better color quality than the S22 Ultra. But that becomes a different story when the sun goes down. As you can see here, the Galaxy S22 Ultra starts to do the same thing that the Pixel was trying to do when there was a little bit more sunlight out. Now I understand it's not a fair comparison considering that the Galaxy S22 Ultra has four cameras while the Pixel 7 only has two, but you gotta give the Pixel some credit for actually holding its own against a powerful phone like the Galaxy. So at the end of the day, if you're looking for a smartphone that gives you great camera quality, a long lasting battery life, and exceptional performance all without having to spend a grand on the spot, then the Pixel 7 is your go-to choice. And as a Galaxy S22 Ultra user, even I've considered making the switch. Now there are a couple of other features in here that might not catch everybody's attention, but it is worth mentioning. So the first feature is Direct My Call. Whenever you call a particular business, they would normally put you through an automated phone system where you would press certain buttons and put you through certain departments. When using Direct My Call, your phone will write out all of the options on that menu before the system has a chance to say them. Your options will be laid out in the middle of the screen, and then at the bottom, you'll have the buttons to easily press while the system is relaying your options. And as a bonus, the Pixel 7 will also read out the entire script that the system reads to you. That way, it'll make it easier for you to know what's being said. This has to honestly be one of the most super useful support features on the Pixel 7. And I would not be surprised if other OEMs or manufacturers or even iPhones started adopting this feature because this is just a game changer. And then you have earthquake detection. And basically as the name goes, it detects earthquakes before it strikes and sends a notification to your phone saying, hey, that an earthquake is coming. It also tells you how big the earthquake will be and where exactly it'll strike. Not a bad feature to have, especially if you live in an area where earthquakes are more common. And finally, there's the new speakers at the bottom, which are a little bit louder than the Pixel 6, but doesn't have that same quality of bass. Now that's never really bothered me since I pretty much wear headphones everywhere I go. But overall, the speakers sound phenomenal. Now the last question is, is the Pixel 7 worth the price? Yes, without a doubt. Because for that 600, you're getting $1,000 camera quality, $1,000 battery life, $1,000 performance, and $1,000 features. Now, of course, just like every other smartphone, the Pixel 7 also had its share of problems and downsides as well. For one, the glass back is a fingerprint magnet. Now, of course, that's not really an issue if you're someone who uses a case anyway, but I kind of like the design and sometimes that kind of keeps me away from wanting to put a case on it. Something else I've experienced while using the 7 was that the camera glass just randomly broke. At first I thought I was just being careless, but after doing some research, this turned out to be a common issue with other users. But thankfully after reaching out to Google, they have agreed to replace it for free. This past 90 days has been one interesting experience with this phone. But overall, I think the best thing about the Pixel 7 is realizing that you don't need to spend a grand to have a peak Android experience. But what do you guys think? 
Do you think that the Pixel 7 has what it takes to make you switch from what you're using now? Let me know what you guys think in the comments. And also, if you like this video and want to see more, hit that like button, subscribe, and I promise to make more in the future. Until next time.